It's the first ever cross-platform direct drive wheel, the Fanatec Podium Racing Wheel F1. Fanatec were kind enough to send us one, and in this video, I'm going to tell you what I think of it. Upon opening the box, you shall find within the Podium Wheelbase DD1 PS4 TM, a power supply unit, a power supply cable, a USB connection cable with a straight plug and a rather nice braided sheath, a torque key to unlock the maximum power of the wheelbase, a RJ12 telephone connection cable for the pedals, an incredibly arousing Club Sport Steering Wheel F1 PS4 edition including the advanced paddle module pre-installed, a cylinder head bolt for locking down the simplified quick release that you find on some of the older or lower level Fanatec wheel rims, some racing style button caps for the Club Sport steering wheel and already mounted to the arousing Club Sport steering wheel are the PlayStation 4 buttons, the square, circle, triangle and all the other options so you know what to push if you're using the potato. And that is everything of value to be found within the box. Of course, there's also a quick start guide, but nobody's going to pay attention to that. Due to the cost of this wheelbase, I would highly recommend downloading the full manual from the Fanatec website. That way, you can read it, avoid breaking stuff in a stupid way, and have a good time. Of course, you could be like me, ignore all the instructions, sit in the corner crying, and wonder where it all went wrong. In order to test this direct drive wheel that's capable of putting out 20 newton meters of wrist braking power, we have of course mounted it to the SimLab P1X cockpit, one of the most stable sim racing cockpits on the market. We've affixed the wheel using the standard 3 bolt Fanatec mounting pattern that's on the underside of the DD wheelbase. If you've got a rig that supports Fanatec wheelbases, then you should be alright sticking this to it. It is also possible to side mount the DD if you have the compatible brackets. Unfortunately, in this case, I did not. Do you like socket holes? Well, if you do, you'll be glad to know that the Podium Wheelbase DD1 PS4 has plenty of them. That's because you not only plug in the power, the USB and the torque power unlock key, but also all your Fanatec peripherals into the back of this wheelbase, meaning that at the end of the day, you just have a single USB cable coming out to your computer or your games console. Everything plugged in and you are ready to update the wheelbase drivers and the wheel rim drivers. You technically don't have to, but you really should do. So get on the Fanatec software. The driver will explain what you need to do. It's all pretty straightforward. Just read what it says on the screen and maybe watch one of the Fanatec instructional videos to avoid being a confused bold chimp. Fasten your seat belts, or don't, because you're in a stationary sim rig. When it comes to sim racing, this direct drive wheel, like other direct drive wheels, utterly transforms the experience of playing a driving simulator. Because it's direct drive, the wheel is effectively the motor. When the game puts out a force feedback signal, you feel that force feedback signal immediately in your hands. Furthermore, there's no slop, give, dampening or cog chatter that you typically get from non-direct drive wheels. You literally do just feel the force feedback and you feel it at a glorious 20 newton meters peak force and 15 newton meters sustained force, causing you to produce some interesting sound effects. <laughs> because of hairy YouTubers, you might be mistaken in thinking that a DD wheel is purely a device for 100% force feedback challenge videos. That is of course one valid use for them, but really what it is that makes a direct drive wheel excel over other wheels that aren't direct drive 
is the fact that it's just so precise and detailed. Even if you turn the wheel down to 30% strength, you can have it so that you can feel the car tire go over a painted line on the road surface. In short, you have room there as an end user to have unrealistically detailed force feedback, which you can then choose to tone down or tone up depending on your mood. To be perfectly honest, unless you're training to be a professional go-kartist, F2 or IndyCar driver, then you're probably going to be running this wheel at lower than its maximum capacity force feedback. Nicely, just like the other Fanatec wheelbases, you can adjust things like strength, dampening and a whole host of other options from the wheel itself whilst you're in-game, which sounds like a small thing, but having got used to it, it's a really nice feature. On the wheelbase itself, you can save up to five profiles, which in my opinion, just isn't enough. However, if you're on PC in the future, you'll be able to use the Fanalab software, which effectively allows for infinite profile setting and also the ability to completely customize what's displayed on the wheel rim with the ability to display things based off the game's telemetry, which is really exciting, but at the moment in closed beta. So hopefully Fanatec hurry up and release it to the general public because it not only adds a ton of value to the DD wheelbase, but also the podium wheel rims. Focusing our attention on the Club Sport Steering Wheel F1 that's bundled in this package and the first thing you notice is that it has more buttons than your average nuclear power plant dash. To be precise, 11 buttons, two 12-way multi-position switches, thumb encoders, rocker switches and a dial in the middle that lets you choose how the analogue paddles are going to operate. Which is handy because this version of the wheel comes with the Podium Advanced Paddle module along with formula plates pre-installed. So not only do you have your typical right and left shifter paddles, but you've got two additional paddles above them and then a right and left analogue paddle, which for those of you without legs or bored of using your legs, you can use as an accelerator and a brake, as a clutch, or to cheat yourself to victory by setting it up for launch control. Nicely, the paddles use neodymium magnets to give a very firm and concise positive action to their actuation. In my opinion, non-magnet-based shifters are perfectly fine, but you do just get a little bit more solidity and punch from magnet-based shifters, which go hand in hand with the stronger force feedback, making everything just feel a bit more solid. In terms of the shape and ergonomics, the wheel rim feels really nice in my hands with me able to access many of the buttons without having to remove my hands from the wheel itself. And those of you familiar with Fanatec Formula rims will of course know that this is exactly the same size and shape as the other rims that they've done in the past, with the only real differences being the number of buttons and the Alcantara finish on the hand grips. Lastly, you'll notice on the back of the wheel rim is the Fanatec Quick Release System. This allows you to remove the wheel and replace it with any other wheel that's sold on the Fanatec web store. It's worth saying it does require a reasonable amount of force to get the wheel rims fully on and off the shaft of the DD wheelbases. Because of that, changing over wheel rims isn't quite ballerina elegant, but once the wheel is on the shaft, I haven't noticed any play or movement whilst driving, even on higher force feedback settings. Hopefully that gave you an overview of the Fanatec Podium Racing Wheel F1, but in this part of the video we get a little bit more critical and we talk about the best and worst aspects of this wheelbase and wheel rim. So uh, let's let's be positive first, let's talk about the, uh, the best, the best aspect of this, the overall best thing of this. Um, and, and pretty obviously, it's the fact that it's a direct drive wheel, but the fact that it's a cross-platform direct drive wheel. So, PlayStation 4, PC, with, with the kit that you get in the box, you have to get a different wheel rim if you want it to also work on the Xbox One, but you're covered for everything. So we don't know about PlayStation 5 yet, but the new Xbox, the next Xbox, will be supported because Microsoft have... Um, said that they're going to support previous devices with that and obviously all PC stuff is always supported going back to like 1983 or something so um, the, the, a direct drive wheel is just incredible you, you're going to be able to feel what this sim puts out and get the best from it when I played this with GT Sport I'm, I'm not the biggest GT Sport fan GT Sport doesn't have the best force feedback but you, you definitely notice a, a quantitative quantity upgrade in the force feedback using this compared to the Fanatec 
uh, CSL Elite or the uh, Thrustmaster T300, for example. As you'd expect, because this is a much more expensive wheelbase. But it just gives you so much freedom to tweak it to whatever you want. The force feedback from this is absolutely incredible. And you get that across all platforms. I mean, that, that is that is the best, the best part of this is indeed that. Now, uh, I'd say second to that, I'm going to keep being positive. Secondary to that, the, the wheel rim uh, is is absolutely awesome as well. The one thing that Fanatec do better than everything else, I have to say, and I've always said, is the wheel rims. Uh, just just the sheer amount of buttons and options you have on this wheel rim, the OLED display on, on the top that gives you information that you can set in the uh, Fanalab software, the, just the amount of the amount of options, the, the, the shifters, um, the, the overall quality, the build quality, the fact that it uses, uh, it's got a nice carbon fibre cover on it, which is largely pointless, but you've got carbon fibre paddles, which allow them to be nice and thin, but still feel very rigid to use. It looks gorgeous if you're into sort of retro future type designs. And, uh, you know, it, you're just using a formula rim, especially when you're driving formula cars, adds a ton to the immersion of, of uh, driving simulators. Uh, that you get compared to just using a, a round with, rim with everything. It's worth saying that, of course, you do need to be aware that Fanatec wheel rims are quite expensive, though relative to the amount of buttons, the, the LED lights, the screen and the options on it, it's not expensive compared to other products on the market with comparable features. But um, if you're looking at this from a sort of general gaming perspective, the wheel rims that Fanatec sell are, are very expensive. So. Really, you could probably want to get a separate rim with this. You'd probably want to get another circle, uh, a circle, a circular rim, um, which you know you're talking another couple hundred pounds to get the sort of full DD experience, a round rim and a formula rim. Uh, but yeah, they, Fanatec absolutely nail it with with their wheel rims uh, and the quality of the wheel rims and the feel of the wheel rims. Absolutely fantastic. Now I don't want to risk being too positive, so I'm going to jump to a negative, and I will say the cables coming out the back of the DD base. Um, they they kind of they come out straight. The power cable doesn't feel completely rigid in the back of the device. Uh, the, you know the USB cable and the pedal cables and the uh, accessory cables they slot in. They're not going to fall out or anything. I haven't noticed any problems with them working themselves loose as a drive. But more just on the sort of relative to the quality of everything else, the cables in the back of the device seem a little bit tacky. Not quite as sort of uh, chunky and powerful that you get the impression of from the rest of it. Um, and also, if you've ever used uh, other direct drive wheels on the market, they have like the big chunky metal power cable and the encoder cable, which might be overkill, but it, it looks awesome and it sort of adds to that sort of thing of like, oh, I've got a powerful device. The back of the uh, this this DD, the DD1 wheelbase effectively, I have to say is a little bit lacklustre. Um, and the pointer cables mean that you probably can't get it as close to a screen or, or to anything that would be behind the wheelbase that you could if they if it had curved cables on the back of it um, a little bit of a nitpick there but you know i'm it's a it's a premium device so you, you expect premiumness all over it continuing with the negativity the quick release holds it in place it's really sturdy uh, it's, it's functionally absolutely fantastic but as i said earlier in the video it is a little bit stiff and you do have to sort of you have to get this in so that's holding this bit in place there and then you can Put the uh, wheels on and off it um, it's just not as smooth or as <laughs> delicate um, as as you would sort of want uh, it works fine but you know it's not elegant so again i think that quick release could have maybe a different slightly different design might have been better but you know, who knows what they had to work with because this obviously works with all the Fanatec wheel rims and their previous quick release system. So I guess they probably had to do some kind of design compromise that got that solidity and actual function whilst also working with all the wheel rims that they currently make. Let's be positive again. Um, the fact that you just have one USB cable coming out of this, I mean, you've got the one power cable and the one USB cable and that's it. Assuming you're using Fanatec equipment, you're that's that really does minimize the clutter that comes off your rig and obviously it's part of allowing it to work with the games consoles they only accept one usb port but the the, the actual power brick itself um is also really small so it just it just doesn't take up much space if you use other direct drive wheels on the market 
they have normally have a, a pretty hefty unit that is changing there are other dds coming out in the market that are nice much smaller packets but even them tend to have larger power supply so it's a very nice small compact unit and i think the actual design of the uh, dd base itself you see it's got like a, a carbon fiber uh well it not like it does have carbon fiber coating all, all around the edges of it it's just really sleek looks really nice um that that sort of convenience functionality or minimalism uh, i really appreciate with this wheelbase um but being negative i just i just went straight over there i don't know if you noticed that went from positive to negative in a flash um i think they've got a little bit overboard with the amount of fanatec logos on this i mean you know you they're getting the marketing when you have dirty youtubers using these wheels or if they're at a trade show or something everyone be like oh it's a fanatec because it says it 50 times all over it on the wheel on the top of the wheel, on the side of the wheelbase, on the back there's an F. Um, I, I, but I think, like, I understand companies wanting to put the logo on stuff, but I think it would have just looked nicer if it just had, like, a just a more minimal uh, logo on the back of it, just, just less stated. Maybe that's just me being a bit picky with the design of things. I'm not a big fan of logos and stuff, but I would say, visually, I think the Fanatec logo uh, does sort of break up the nice, minimal design of it. Um, but I'll just be positive again, just be positive again. The, the OLED screen that's on the wheelbase. Now, you would think initially, you'd be like, oh, this that's so stupid and pointless. Um, and yeah, if you're focused on the driving, you're not focusing on the little uh, OLED screen on the DD. But one really cool thing it has is on one of the uh, flip through menus, when you hold down the, the function button on the wheel, you can flip through some additional options on the, uh, on the DD wheelbase, separate to the actual uh, wheel and force feedback settings. And when the display shows you how many newton meters of force are currently being delivered by the wheel, positive and negative, but also uh, what the maximum peak force was over the last five seconds. Now, what's cool with that is if you're trying to dial in force feedback in with the same car in different simulators, or you just want to make sure every simulator is kind of set up the same in terms of general feel, you can use that to, to, to see exactly what kind of forces that you're getting out and if you're matching things up. Which if you're trying to be more consistent or you just want everything to feel relatively similar across the board, which if you're trying to if you're trying to replicate laps or you, you know, you're trying to be consistent sim racer, having things be consistent, that's actually quite a nice functional feature that I, I hadn't thought of until I started using it and I was messing around with the different sims. I was like, well actually, I'm dialing the Porsche in R Factor 2 to output the same Newton meters as the Porsche in the Seto and just to, just see what the actual feels the, the feeling is like different with the same amount of forces coming through it's, it's kind of pointless but i thought it's pretty cool and just having the you've got the you've got the temperature the fan speed and all the other details and it tells you if you've got your pedals and your shifter and everything else plugged in and when you set things up it shows it on the screen it's just nice it's just nice to have that there i don't know how much more that added to the price of the unit but i think it's a really nice feature to have um so that's that's really cool uh you would think it was pointless, but it's actually a nice little OLED screen that, that actually has some functionality there. Um, also, oh god, I'm being too, way too positive here. Um, you can, uh, by holding down the SH button and the triangle, you can flick through the compatibility mode. So if you're running this on PC mode, PlayStation 4, or the uh, Club Sport V2 uh, 2.5 compatibility mode, you can just flick through it, and uh, that basically ensures that you're you know any game in the in the past and moving forwards uh, is supported by the wheelbase um, and it's just it's just really quick to flick through it so I think of the functionality and what you get with the different buttons and the features on the wheel so as I said with my CSL Elite review the ability to set the uh, the joystick on the fun not the funky joystick the other joystick on the wheel to be a mouse controller these are things that generally other wheels and other direct drive wheels on the market don't do and they might not be important to you but it's a nice thing to have uh, without having to use other different software, sort of integrated into the Fanatec uh, software, driver software. So they, they really do. I think Fanatec have really done a good job with the bits on top, <laughs> the software support, the bits on top, um, as well, in this case, uh, of the actual DD feeling uh, absolutely fantastic. So... Um, Man, this has been mostly positive. I mean, it's a direct drive wheel. I've got a soft spot for direct drive wheels. <laughs> I can't help myself. DD wheels are so good. Um, 
The uh, I mean, one more positive, then we'll go to the final negative. Uh, the the wheel's effectively silent. The actual motor is silent. I mean, if you've got it on full power, your sim rig's not going to be silent. Your arm fat's going to be wobbling. That's probably going to be making noise. But the you can't hear really hear the fan in the DD wheelbase, and you can't really hear any noise coming from the DD as you move it. I mean, maybe you're going as you go for goodness, but it's essentially silent. So I mean. I don't think noise from Force Feedback Wheels has really been a problem uh, since like T T300 CSL Elites. Uh, the noise was a sort of G29 issue <laughs> and T25 issue, but it's totally silent for any of you wondering about the noise of it. I bring that up because I keep getting asked about how noisy the wheels we are we're using are. So silent, silent is the answer to that question. Well, that really leaves us with the uh, the, the thing that's not a positive or a negative, just the reality, and that is the price which is a uh, very painful 1,599 euros, which is a lot of money for a game controller. I mean, if, if you're not from the land of sim racing and you're not familiar with direct drive wheels and high-end simulator equipment, it does seem like lunacy to spend that amount of money on, on a steering wheel. It, well, it is lunacy. <laughs> There's no way around it. It's total lunacy. But... Um, it's just the reality of how much these... It's, it's in the same price point as other DD wheels. And I think though you can get um, some of the DD wheels on the market that have stronger overall force feedback strength from them uh, for, for, a sort of cheap, for a cheaper price than the actual wheelbase, when you combine this wheelbase with the steering wheel, uh, I think you're actually getting pretty reasonable value for money. I mean, it, it really is the steering wheels that Fanatec sort of can leverage to offer the value for money. Because as I say, there's nothing really on the market that gives you the compatibility, of, well, a DD wheel in the first place, with the, everything that comes from force feedback from a DD, which is amazing. I hope I got that through. <laughs> but, but that, obviously with the cross-platform support and the, the formula rims and the other rims that they do, you. you if you were going to buy one of these wheels, a, a wheel rim with com comparable features, I don't think there are wheels with comparable features, with the LED lights, display and stuff based off telemetry, uh, traction control, flags and everything. I mean, you, actually, you can DIY something that does that, but a sort of all-in-one solution with this amount of buttons, the LED lights, LED displays, the, the functionality of everything, you're looking, for, you're looking at like a thousand pounds at least just for, a, just for the wheel rim. So... That's where I think Fanatec can really leverage their, their wheel rims is that it makes the 1599 uh, a more reasonable price for this wheelbase. Uh, I personally, I, I would love, I really, really want a direct drive wheel to come onto the market that's a sort of, uh, you know, £800, £550 price point. I'd like that to be there as an option because currently it isn't. I don't know if it will happen. At the end of the day, it, it's pretty expensive equipment, what, whoever puts it together and whatever they do. But uh, yes, yeah, so the painful price of sim racing, uh, that's, that's how it is. You don't need to, just, just, just get a Mad Cat's wheel. You'll, you'll be fine and happy, I promise. End of the day, it's an absolutely fantastic piece of equipment. Force feedback from it's absolutely superb. It's very comparable to the small mage uh, OSW that I've been using previously. Um, in terms of tangible difference to the force feedback, this wheelbase has possibly slightly better dampening on it. it. It seems to do dampening in a slightly more natural way. It's a little bit less overactive. It's still punchy and strong, but it's a little bit less overactive than the small mage with the uh, Simucube 1 software. Um, but it's, a, it's basically exactly the same as a Simucube with the additional features that Fanatec offer the software and the wheel rims and everything. So it's, it's absolutely amazing. The, the only thing to really left to see uh, will be how long these wheelbases last for. You, the general hope is with a direct drive wheel and with buying anything as a consumer for sim racing that, 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 in that sort of above thousand pound price point. The hope is that it lasts for a long time and these have only been out for about a year now, probably under a year actually, so we don't really know the raw longevity. Of course Fanatec do offer a warranty, uh, an extended warranty if you wanted to get that for more peace of mind. but. Um, We'll see. We'll see. That'll be that'll be the crux of it, I think, because everything else about this is absolutely bloody fantastic. Uh, we just need to see if they if they've got longevity. I hope they do. So uh, yeah, 
I think we've reached the the end of this of this review of the Fanatec, the Fanatec, <laughs> the Fanatec Podium Racing Wheel F1. Um, if you're just on PC, uh, remember that Fanatec do the uh, they do the DD1, uh, which is basically the same base as this, same mostly internals, but it doesn't come with a wheel. And they do the DD2, which is the same, mostly the same internals, but has. Uh, stronger overall force feedback higher peak and sustained newton meter torque though the dd1 spec the spec that this has I, i'm going to be running it at under probably under probably around about 60 percent force feedback in most things but yes hopefully you found this uh, review useful riveting exciting and mildly arousing um i, I hope so because if you did uh, that means you definitely have to click the like button and you definitely need to subscribe and if you do end up destroying your bank account by buying one of these uh, feel free to use my Fanatec affiliate link located underneath the video subscribers of the channel knew that was coming you were you were waiting when's he gonna when's he gonna throw that affiliate link in so uh, yeah that's it guys thanks for watching everyone happy sim racing happy tea drinking and goodbye